Any questions? Can I play a song? Yes. I'm going to play the song that I wrote a solo to, but I'm not going to play the solo because it's too difficult. It's called Heavy Metal Strong. You know, Elizabeth, I wrote this solo. And it was the worst thing I ever did in my life because when we recorded the record, I had to play the solo. But while I was playing the melody of Heavy Metal Strong, I had to play this. <laughs> it was so hard. The first time when we did this, it was a bop, a bop, and we did this melody. The first time it was perfect. I was like, yeah. And then my producer, Mike Manning, was like, well, George. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're just so weak. So let's. Let's do that again. From that point on. <laughs> and then he said, no, it still sounds like a solo. So Joey Calcaro said, can you play this melody with George? And, oh my God. <laughs> and Joey had to practice it. He was screaming at me. We finished the session. We're all leaving. And he's standing on the piano bench, staring at me in the day because he had to go two bars at a time. Thank <laughs> you. 
your foot and really being conscious of the tires. Because solid time allows you to fly away from the time. So concept I use, and I try to teach these kids, is that you split your mind into two parts, okay? Maybe the right side of the mind is tracking the chords, the harmonic continuity, and the time. And the left side of your brain is playing the traumatic approach. Okay, triad approach. So that they run together. So it's like you have this dual mentality now. So that you, you need to know where you are in tune. And, you, and once you can keep that going, then you can break away from the tune and play with it. Something that takes years to develop. It's called the split mind syndrome. You split your mind not only into two parts, but you can split into 20 parts. Okay, so it's like in the, in the moment of Zenism, if there's going to be a, a, a provocation or something's going to happen, or someone's going to come at you and attack, you know, you're looking at the person, but I see everything else around me. Okay? looking at what's about to happen to me when I see this guy over here. And it happened to me one time on a train in Brooklyn. These guys were going to take my wallet. They were just wrong. And as I was getting on the train, I could feel it. These five guys were I could feel it. So I was getting on the train with my Japanese girlfriend. And as I got on, I see these guys. And I don't know what I did. I took my two fingers and they pushed off the guys out the door. And I hear them go, and it happened so quick, my girlfriend said, what just happened? But these guys were like, out the door because I could see what they were going to do. They were going to come around and take my walk. So, relating to that, getting back to the play, you can split your mind so that you hear the tune, you hear the changes, you feel the time, and then you can go off and do whatever you want. I know it sounds crazy, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> It's just the way I look at it. If you get Dave Lehman up here, he'll tell you how he views it. Joe Guevara will tell you how he views it. Everyone will give you their conception of how they see the music. And everyone is right. And there's no one way of doing it. That's what I love about doing this. I'm telling you today, this is the way I see it. Uh, you might be going up the door and say, man, this guy is really crazy. <laughs> But it works. Okay, so then all of a sudden you go and you figure out a concept. Oh, this is my concept. This is what I do. And I accept that because that's how you hear it. What I don't like is when people put down what they're hearing. You know, there's a concept. Like, for instance, with the triadic approach, there were years when I was putting it together where it wasn't as solid as it is now. So some of my friends, and these were people that I taught at school with, were basically you know, suggesting that I might be bullshitting and I play. <laughs> and they were probably right because I was in the formative stages of figuring that out. And you can't put a person down when they're trying to figure out something that's a little different than what everyone else plays. And that's the problem with music is that people are afraid to separate from what everyone else is doing for fear of not being accepted. You know what? I don't need any more friends, and I don't want any more friends. You understand what I'm saying? And when I give you my card, it says, George Garzo, don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So for this fear of not being accepted uh, is why people play the way they do. Or they're afraid to to discover the undiscovered. It's scary. You know, I come up here and I say, yes, I can go up the track of the coach with major tribes and half step in between. But, and, and this, this was developed by me. It wasn't given to me from uh, Luke Ogratz, from the Godfather. This was something that I put together. No one taught this to me. I figured it out on the blackboard while I was teaching in the Wingo Conservatory. And these kids were cool enough to let me do it. Because they really thought I knew what I was doing, but I didn't. I was like, oh, come on. Really? You need to try it against try it against try it against try it. Works. Come on, you can play anything you want on the court. It doesn't matter. 
You know, while I'm writing in the book, the kids were like, yeah, yeah. And then they would bring it to their classical teachers and show it, and the classical teachers were totally into it. That's when I realized I was wrong to something, because the classical people were buying it. You know, they were like, wow, those guys freaking bananas, but I understood the story. <laughs> Questions? <coughs> Tell us about this. Yeah, I'm going to explain the details. <laughs> right. Approach. Try, okay. And thoughts, were you saying the same thing? Yeah. All right. So what I did was, you know, the, the students would come in here to fringe, and after a while they were like, come on, show us how you do this. How do you play against fours? We weren't even playing twos, we were playing three. So, I had to develop something that would allow the student to roam freely over chord changes. Um, I really, I didn't study too many things in my life, but the one thing I really got into was understanding what chord training was about. And I used to drive back and forth from Boston to New York, listening to chord listening to chord Not what he played, but how he played, the sound, the vibe, you know, how he set that thing up. Harmonically, it was way over my head. But as I got into that part of it, I started to isolate and not listen to McCoy and just listen to Coltrane and, real, and realize that he was <clears throat> into a kind of a triadic approach. Sure, he developed a three tonic system where he would play up most of the songs like Giant Steps were based off of you know, three major tonalities. The Giant Steps is B, E flat, and G. Those are the root tonalities of jazz. When I was looking at that one day, I realized that that was an augmented triad. So I, I said to myself, well, if jazz steps is just an augmented triad, well, why can't you just play all augmented triads over jazz steps? And like an idiot, I tried it on the bandstand one night and it worked. <laughs> it actually worked. I mean, it was very risky you know, to, to get up and do that, but hey, you know. What are they going to say? Oh, that's wrong, or I don't like that. Well, they did. Like, that would be shit. Because <laughs> when I listen to the way these people play, it was very bored. You know? But I would never say anything. You know, the one thing I learned was never open your mouth. <laughs> never, especially me. Because if I go walk, it goes all around the world. That's why you never hear me say anything. <laughs> well, I learned never open the door. I mean, unless you're going to say something constructive, like don't say like, "Oh, I heard uh, Joey Vagadona say that he sounded like shit," and then that goes all around, and then right goes on, and then Joey calls me, and says, "Man, I heard that you say you don't like what I do. I didn't say that, you know." So now I, I go. So anyway, I discovered that Giant Steps was made up of an uh, augmented triad. So rather than playing, I can show this here. Did I show this here today, Joe? You the other play? Yeah. On Giant Steps when you play.
Okay? So and if you put the changes behind it, it makes it even more legal. So I would just, look, I know that works. So I, would, I would test it. And that's when I started to realize that it doesn't matter what you played on any court. It doesn't matter if you, you can play whatever you want and you can quote me on it too, provided you learn how to do it. You can't go tonight to the gym session bar. <laughs> Thank you. 